right, well, good afternoon. Thank you again to each and every one of you for being here. Of course, we wanted to say thank you again to our sponsors, Applied Network Defense, Garland Technology, Midbit Technologies, Dualcom, and No Starch Press. So if you're on social media, if you can hit up those folks, let them know that you appreciate them being a sponsor of Security Onion Conference. We greatly appreciate that. So we said thank you to the sponsors. Uh, Phil talked about how great the speakers were. Let's give them one more round of applause to these great speakers. And of course you, we couldn't do this without you. There'd be no reason for speakers to speak if you all didn't show up. So we greatly appreciate all of you who traveled here, especially those who traveled from overseas. We greatly appreciate you being a part of our conference. We've got some other things to say. So Karen, please stand up. So Karen Long has put a lot of blood, sweat, and tears into this conference. Great job. And Karen recently celebrated her fourth anniversary with us, so thank you, Karen, for all that you do. We've had a lot of great volunteers, Chelsea Minter, Michael Arnold, and Hunter Martin, and uh, so really appreciate the work there. Uh, and we talked about the banana pudding, but how many folks enjoyed that banana pudding? Let's, let's hear it. Mike Bird, stand up. Stand up, Mike. There he is. Good job, Mike. He's forever suckered, I mean, uh, volunteered himself into banana pudding. Uh, and we also have a recent SkillsBridge intern, Chanel Bernal. Is Chanel here? Is she on the hallway? Okay, well, if you see her out in the hallway, uh, she took the merch table and she just ran with it. So she's done a great job with that. Make sure you stop by and say hello and thank you to her. Of course, this is the entire SOS family, so again, like I said this morning, to each and every one of you, I could not do this without you. So thank you to my world-class engineering team, thank you to my sales and marketing team, thank you to my world-class instructor team and everybody else uh, on the professional services and support staff. You all do an amazing job, and I'm just proud of the team that we've built. Thanks, of course, to the Georgia Cyber Innovation and Training Center for this lovely facility. Uh, we've enjoyed coming here for the last several years and look forward to being here in the future as well. Now, this entire day, if you are on social media, Twitter in particular, you've, you may have seen me live tweeting throughout the day. Now, obviously, I can't really do that while I'm talking, so I'm going to need you to help me out here. For this last talk, if you're on Twitter, if you can live tweet this, tag at Security Onion and hashtag Sock Augusta, right? We're going to try to break the internet with our live tweeting this afternoon. And you know, if you tweet these things, you know, I'll, I'll retweet you later and you know, maybe you get some new followers out of the deal, so something going for you there. Now, every year uh, we do a little thing for this great thing called the Rural Technology Fund. So Mr. Chris Sanders, come on down. So, I think most folks are aware, but for those who aren't, Rural Technology Fund is a great organization started by my good friend, Mr. Chris Sanders. They do amazing work, and it has a special place in my heart because I grew up on a little bitty dirt road my address was literally Rural Route 2, Box 52A, and I was in a little tiny house, but it was computers, it was technology that transformed my life, that transformed my career and got me out of that. And so this is a fund, this is an organization that's doing that, that's putting technology into the hands of the next generation. And he has worked tirelessly, he and his entire team, for several years now, to continue to uh, go about this mission. And so what we do is, uh, I think Phil mentioned earlier, our Security Onion documentation book that we sell on Amazon. All of those royalties, we donate to Rural Technology Fund. And so this year, we are donating all of that plus an additional donation. So we are giving you a check for the Rural Technology Fund in the order of $10,000. So congratulations, <laughs> keep up the good work. We love you. All right. 
Now, you've heard a lot of great talks today, some really smart talks from some really smart people. Now, I am not what you would call a smart man, and this is not going to be a smart talk, but we're going to have some fun, okay? So, now, Dave Kennedy spoke this morning, and I don't know if he mentioned it, and I don't know how many folks here know, but Dave is a cool guy. Isn't he a cool guy? Was he a great speaker or what? So now, in addition to being a great speaker, a great technologist, a great businessman, he also happens to own a DeLorean, a real DeLorean, a real Back to the Future DeLorean. Like, is that cool or what? Right? I'm so totally jealous. And of course, like my friend Scott Hall, I love 80s movies. So we're going to do a little Back to the Future this afternoon. So. I have another good friend named Mike Bird who says that I quote movies way too much. Not possible. Not possible. It's impossible. But if you don't like Back to the Future quotes, then why don't you, wait for it, make like a tree and get out of here. All right. So we want to have some fun, so we're going to do some trivia. I assume that maybe one or two of you may have seen this little movie called Back to the Future. Anybody seen this movie? I know, it, it wasn't really that popular. It, you know, nobody ever really saw it, so it's pretty obscure. These are pretty obscure references. But let's just see if we can have some audience participation anyway. Because nostalgia is a heck of a drug. First question, what year was Back to the Future released? I heard 80? No? 84, that's close. 82, no, I, I heard it. 1985, very good. All right, so we got the first question down. Now, that was the easy question. They get a little bit harder from here. Not crazy hard, but just enough to keep you interested because we're all in a barbecue coma, right? What is the name of the dance that George and Lorraine attend in 1955? Bam! The Enchantment Under the Sea dance. That's too easy. All right. What is the name of Marty McFly's band? Wow! You got that quick. The Pinheads is absolutely right. Great job. You folks know you're back to the future. I'm impressed. All right. So, now that we're all kind of up to speed on the Back to the Future trivia, let's hop in Dave Kennedy's DeLorean, and we're going to set our time circuits to a red-letter date in the history of Security Onion, December 25th, 1984. So what's significant about December 25th? Christmas Day. Okay. So I want you to close your eyes. And think back with me, nostalgic, it's the 80s, you're a kid in the 80s, you love the 80s, the 80s is the greatest time ever, you're living in the future, right? You get up on Christmas morning, you run to the Christmas tree, you've got Christmas carols playing in the background, you're drinking a little eggnog, right? It's a great time, and you can't wait to rip open your Christmas present. What is it? Audience participation time. Can anybody tell me what this is? I heard Commodore. I heard 64. It's not a 64. If it's not a Commodore 64, what is it? Did somebody say Vic 20? It's not a Vic 20. Good, good guess, though. It's not a plus four. It's a Commodore 16. That's an obscure computer. So that's what I got Christmas morning, 1984. I was seven years old. I hooked this thing up to the TV, flipped on the power switch, and nothing happened. It was totally dead. So I'm like crying, right? Because I was looking forward to playing with my computer on Christmas Day. You know, I'm totally upset. But this is where I learned rule number one of incident response, which is don't panic, right? Because my dad, cool as cucumber, he gets out his craftsman tool set and he rips apart my brand new computer and he discovers that at the factory they had taken 
you know, as they were assembling it, one of the power wires got a screw put right in the middle of it, right? So he whips out his handy-dandy soldering iron, and he fixes it right up there on the spot, fires right up. And I'm like, that's awesome. That's the power of technology. That's the power of knowing how to be able to solve problems and be able to kind of understand how things work and fix them when they go wrong. So I got my first computer, Commodore 16. And you know, when you're a kid, your parents tell you what to do, right? Your teachers tell you what to do. But I sat down on this computer and I told it what to do, right? That's a lot of power. That's addictive power, right? And as we were talking before about the Rural Technology Fund, like this was transformative power. Right, because I was a little kid on a dirt road in a rural area and living in a little tiny house, not expecting anything out of my future, but this thing transformed my life. Next question. Let's fast forward from 1984. So we hopped into the DeLorean, we changed the time circuits, we fast forward to 1990. So who is this? Hint, it is not Doc Brown. But somebody said it, it's Cliff Stoll. And trivia question, what is Cliff Stoll holding? A Klein bottle. What in the world is a Klein bottle? It's only got one surface. It's a bottle with zero volume. So as a, as a nerdy scientist, this really appeals to Cliff and he manufactures these Klein bottles, which are kind of a you know, mathematical paradox. He's a fun guy, what can I say? So, I was a computer nerd for my very first computer, you know, hooked on this world of computers. I was in middle school in 1990. A family friend said, hey, Doug, you're into computers, right? I said, yeah. He said, you need to read this book, The Cuckoo's Egg. So, who all has read that? I would assume most folks in here. That's good. Yep. So, for those of you who aren't aware, and this is your homework assignment, go home and read The Cuckoo's Egg tonight, if you haven't already. And if you don't have time to read, if you don't enjoy reading like I didn't enjoy reading in middle school, there's also a Nova documentary based on the book, uh, which is available on YouTube, and it's got all kinds of cheesy 80s PBS nostalgia, so it's great. But it's the first really well-documented computer intrusion, right? Cliff caught a German hacker breaking into United States government systems and stealing information, selling it to the Russian KGB. And this, again, as a middle schooler who did not enjoy reading, I stayed up all night long reading this book because I could not put it down. Because here's this world of computers that I love, and now you're telling me that there's good versus evil inside the world of the computer. And that was amazing to me. And this was before there was really a cybersecurity industry, right? So it didn't even occur to me that you could do this for a living, other than Cliff kind of getting lucky and catching this guy by accident. All right, so that was middle school. Let's fast forward to the high school years. So we hop in the DeLorean. We fast forward to Evans High School. My good friend Phil went to Evans High School as well. We had some good times at Evans High School. And, uh, but, you know, at this point in time, I was kind of sick of being a computer nerd. You know, I was, you know, I was not popular like the cool kids because I was hanging out with computers and stuff like that. So I was like, high school, it's time for a change. I want to be a rock star. Yeah, that's right. So, got really involved in music, and that's actually how Phil and I met, was through music. And uh, if you didn't know, Phil's a very accomplished musician. And so, that's what I did in high school. So, next trivia question, who is this? Huey Lewis, Huey Lewis very good. So in the, uh, in the movie, Marty McFly's band, the Pinheads, they're auditioning. And so real life rock star Huey Lewis is pay playing the role here. And he says, sorry, fellas, I'm afraid you're just too darn loud. In my case, you know, I was, I was kind of in high school trying to figure out this music thing. And I was like, maybe I could have a career as a musician. I could do some cool stuff. But in my case, Huey Lewis said to me, I'm sorry, Doug you're just not that great of a singer, you know? Sorry. So Huey Lewis disapproved, so I kind of moved on from that. 
Next question, what is this? Yep, that's Doc Brown's original diagram of the flux capacitor, right? So this was kind of the genesis of his idea that led to him building this amazing DeLorean and being able to travel through time. So fast forward from my high school years to 2008, I started this little blog, the Security Onion blog. And this is our very first blog post, September the 3rd of 2008. And so this was kind of our uh, initial flux capacitor sketch of what was to come. The simple little idea that would lead to larger things later. There's this great line in the movie where Marty's getting the machine fired up and he says, flux capacitor, fluxing, right? So here's the flux capacitor in the DeLorean doing its thing. And so that's kind of where we were in 2009 with our very first Security Onion release. I started building the platform in 2008. It was just in my spare time. It was not my full-time job. And so it took several months to get that first version put together and actually released. But we got it out there in 2009. And uh, you can actually go and read that blog post. Things were a lot different back then. It was a much different looking platform. Uh, so you can have some fun nostalgia looking at uh, things like Squeal and Squirt and Snort SP, if anybody remembers Snort SP. There's also this great line in the movie where uh, Doc said, please excuse the crudity of this model. I didn't have time to build it to scale or paint it. And that's kind of how I feel looking back at those original versions of Security Onion because, again, it was just a part-time thing, just a little hobby project. And it was really, really rough around the edges. It wasn't polished. It wasn't production ready. But, uh, you know, you go back and play with those things now, and they're pretty crude. It was a pretty crude model for sure. Next trivia question. What is this, that white thing? <laughs> Mr. Fusion, right? So... Doc Brown, uh, originally, when he built the time machine, it was powered by what? Plutonium, right? That was a little bit inconvenient to come by plutonium, so when he traveled to the future, he was able to source a Mr. Fusion reactor and kind of retrofit that onto the machine, and uh, that was much more convenient. So our kind of analogy to that was in 2011, the project originally started very heavily focused on network visibility, network security monitoring, intrusion detection, those kind of things. In 2011, we added endpoint detection, right? And this is really kind of goes back to what Josh Brower was saying earlier, that Security Onion, we kind of view it as a visibility platform, right? So it's not just a network platform, not just an endpoint platform, but really visibility. Wherever you need visibility, we're going to go and get that visibility and plug it into the platform. Same thing, and if we fast forward to 2012, we added log management. Again, because when it comes to visibility, we need a place to store all of those logs. So we added that to the platform, and it's been a part of our feature set ever since. Now, fast forward to 2014. I had a great job working at Mandiant, one of the best cybersecurity companies in the world, got acquired by FireEye, another amazing cybersecurity company. But I had started this little project and I had folks coming to me asking for things like training and professional services and appliances and all of these things. And so 2014, I took a leap of faith and it paid off. Uh, so I started the company and was a one man band for a while. So I kind of felt like Doc Brown doing this crazy idea thing, right? And I, my, my hair kind of turned white over the years from all the stress, but you know, we've survived and we've grown and life is good. That was also the year of our very first Security Onion Conference. I think Phil mentioned it this morning. So again, who was at that very first Security Onion Conference in 2014, Savannah Rapids Pavilion, a couple of folks. That was a great time, right? I have very fond memories of that day. Uh, it was very exciting. It's a beautiful venue, but of course we did outgrow it that very first year. Uh, so thank you to those who were there and those who continue to support our conference. And so that year, 2014, our keynote speaker was uh, my hero and role model, Richard Baitlick. 
and he spoke on a brief history of network security monitoring. And so in that, if you actually kind of, I'll zoom in here so we can see this a little bit better. He actually mentions Cliff Stoll and the fact that uh, the Cliff Stoll intrusions, which occurred in 1986, really spawned this entire series of events, right? Cliff inspired Todd Heberlein to build the original network security monitoring platform, which then kind of inspired Bam Vischer and, and Richard Baitlick to do their work with Squeal and a whole bunch of other stuff with the Air Force and lots of other organizations as well. And so it's amazing how Cliff, who, you know, he's a astrophysicist and uh, he, he couldn't care less about computer security, but he's really inspired this entire generation of cybersecurity practitioners by that little intrusion that he handled and documented so capably in the cuckoo's egg. And this picture, of course, is Todd Heberlein, who Richard calls the godfather of NSM. And so I found it fitting to, the very next year, make sure that we had Todd Heberlein come and speak at Security Union Conference 2015. And he delivered this talk looking back over a quarter century of network monitoring. And it was really great to hear from both Richard's perspective and Todd's perspective you know, what network security monitoring has meant to them over the years and what they have seen, what they are seeing, and what they kind of see in the future. And of course, you know, 2015's future is today's present. So it's kind of fun to think about. They were kind of forecasting what we'd be seeing today. Now, 2016, we moved to yet another venue. So who, who was there in 2016? I know Paul was. I'm not trolling you, Paul. I'm really not. Uh, so that was a fun day, so we debuted the Onion Arcade. I didn't have anything better else to speak about, so I, I you know, spent 40 hours building an arcade machine and spoke about that. So that was a lot of fun. 2017, we were in the same venue. That was the Jaguar Student Activity Center. Uh, that was a lot of fun as well. Had some great t-shirts that, that, that year. I still wear that t-shirt to this day. 2018 is when we moved into this building right here. Uh, so for those of you who aren't aware, so this Georgia Cyber Center, as it was originally called, now called the Georgia Cyber Innovation and Training Center, which is a little bit more of a mouthful, but they're kind of expanding their original platform and broadening their horizons. Uh, but the Georgia Cyber Center was originally kind of instituted based on the governor of Georgia saying, here's $100 million cash, go and build me a cyber center. You have 18 months, go. And they got it done, right? And they did an amazing job. This place has been able to house conferences like this. We have folks here from Fort Gordon, from Department of Defense, from Savannah Riverside, Department of Energy, FBI, GBI, a bunch of uh, defense contractors. And so this building is really fulfilling its purpose of allowing these groups to interact, to co-mingle, to cross-pollinate, to share ideas, to talk, and do exactly what we're doing here today, right? We're sharing best practices, we are sharing lessons learned, and we're learning from each other. So that was our first year here, and that was also the year that we debuted our Security Onion Solutions appliances, so that was a big turning point for our company. Now fast forward to 2020, this was really our, our big announcement that had been a long time in coming. That's when we dropped Security Onion 2. Um, and that was, wow, that was, a, that was a big project, wasn't it? That was a lot of fun to uh, finally see that come to fruition. And uh, that has really set the stage for what we've been doing the last couple of years. We've been iterating on that new Security Onion 2 platform. That included a new interface for threat hunting and uh, we've continued to innovate and iterate on that as well. The following year, 2021, we showed off our response ready appliances. So in addition to our standard data center rack mount appliances, we've got portable appliances for emergency incident response, throw it in an overhead bin on an airplane, take it with you and get the job done. 
2022, last year, we debuted case management. So again, we're expanding our platform and trying to give you as many features and as much functionality out of the box as possible so that you can focus your time and effort on catching the bad guys rather than dealing with a whole bunch of different platforms. And uh, Pete, what was that phrase you used earlier today? It was the swivel chair correlation or something like that. You know, we're trying to cut down on that kind of stuff. We also integrated analyzers so that when you put a case in a case management, you can declare observables, you can push those observables through things like uh, OTX and some of the other analyzers that we have there. So again, continuing to build the platform, continuing to make it stronger, better, faster. We also included dashboards. So taking uh, our original hunting interface, giving it lots more dashboard and visualization capabilities, we continue to grow and improve the platform. We also added intrusion detection honeypots. Dave talked about deception this morning, right? That's a very important piece of uh, catching bad guys as they get more and more uh, careful in what they do, we need to provide more ways for our defenders to catch what they're doing. All right, so that was our DeLorean ride through the past, kind of reviewing where we've been. So now let's go back to the future. So this slide is a lie. Security Onion 2.3.270 has not dropped yet. So what we're going to do it's a little bit of fun. So whenever we do a release at work on a normal work day, we do a merge party. I thought we would invite all of you to be a part of our merge party. You want to be a part of our merge party? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Of course. All right. So, Mike, are you ready? Mike is ready to go. So we're all going to do the merge party. So we're going to do a countdown. So we'll start from three. You ready? Three, two, one. Go, Mike, go. Hey, we got the thumbs up. We have liftoff. All right. So we talked about Security Onion 2, and of course the version of that that we've been building and iterating on for the past couple of years is 2.3. And so as of just a few seconds ago, we have dropped version 23270. This includes Elastic 882, Grafana 9220, and CyberChef 10.5.2 and a couple of other uh, improvements as well. So you can find that uh, in the documentation. There's release notes. There's a blog post which should be live by now. It was scheduled to go out at 4 p.m. So that's version 2.3, but hey, the big news is a few weeks ago, we announced this new project called 2.4 and the fact that it has now reached general availability in the form of version 2.4.10. So who's played with 2.4? 2.4.10. What do you think? You like it? Awesome. So you can run 2.4.10 on prem or in the cloud. It's available in Amazon, Azure, GCP. I think uh, Josh Brower mentioned this earlier. We have Security Onion Essentials training for 2.4. That was released on Monday, so thanks again to Josh and Matt Gracie for recording those. So that's an entire YouTube playlist that's totally free uh, and commercial free. Uh, you don't even have to sit through annoying ads. So you can check that out now, and that is a prerequisite for our paid training classes. Now, this is kind of cool. We talked earlier about the Rural Technology Fund and about how we take our documentation, we put it into book form, and we sell that on Amazon. We've been selling that for a few years now, but it's always been in black and white. So I'm happy to announce that today, for the first time ever, it's now in full color. So you can order your copy at securityonion.net slash book, and your purchase will be a part of next year's Rural Technology Fund donation. Now also, when you get your book from Amazon, you can turn to the very back of the book and you'll see a discount there that is good for our online training and SOCP. Now what is SOCP? That's the Security Onion Certified Professional. 
That's our certification, right? So if you want to prove to the world that you know your security onion, then you can do our certification and that's going to be available for 2.4 coming soon. So we talked about 2.3 and 2.4. What about migration between the two? This is a question we get quite often. So just a couple of days ago, uh, our amazing professional services team, thanks Chris and the rest of the team, put together a migration guide so that you can, if you have an existing installation of 2.3, you can migrate to 2.4. So if you go to our 2.4 documentation and click on the appendix link, you'll see the migration guide there. Just please note that there are some disclaimers and warnings that you need to pay attention to there. All right, so that brings us to end of life for 2.3. So we can't maintain 2.3 forever. We have to establish some sort of end of life. And every time that we've done a transition in the past, we've always established a six month end of life window. That's usually a good enough amount of time for most folks to be able to migrate to the new platform. So we're announcing today that six month end of life window. So that gives you till April the 6th of 2024 to get migrated from 2.3 to 2.4. Now, if you are a current paying customer of professional services or appliances, and you have concerns about getting migrated by that date, reach out to support and we will work with you. However, keep in mind that the underlying platform, CentOS 7, goes end of life June the 30th of 2024, and of course we have no control over that. Now, this brings us to our next slide, which is also a lie. Security Onion 2420 has not dropped yet, but it will drop in just a few seconds. Are you ready? Is everybody ready? You wanna do a merge party? Three, two, one, go! Yay, we have liftoff. Aren't merge parties fun? In a nerdy way? All right, so 2420 includes upgraded components. It's got many new features and a whole bunch of fixes. For upgraded components, we have Kratos 1.0.0, we've got Suricata 6014 and Zeek 5010. For new features, we've got six of them if I can count there. We've got a new ingest parser for PFSense OpenVPN logs, we've got new analyzers, we've got grid screen improvements, we've got uh, improvements to SOC grid members, so lots of good stuff there. And I'm certainly not going to read through that list. That's all of the fixes that we put in. So again, thank you to my amazing engineering team for working on 2420 feverishly over the last few weeks and getting it done. So 2420 is our most powerful release ever. It's our most streamlined release ever. And it's available today. Again, that blog post should have gone live at about 4 p.m. So if you go out to blog.securityonion.net, you should see blog posts for 2420 and for 23270 as well. But of course, there's always one more thing. A little bit of a sneak peek. See, that's a clip from Back to the Future. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, thanks, bro. All right. Let's talk about Playbook and detection. So Playbook is a component of Security Onion that's been in the platform for several years now. And so what we are going to do is we are going to rewrite that and integrate that right into Security Onion console. In addition to that, Detections is a new Security Onion console interface that will unify all of your detections. So we're talking about your Suricata NIDS rules, your Yara rules, your Sigma rules, and we're gonna apply a standard way of handling the life cycle of a detection. So you're gonna create that detection, you're gonna test it, you're gonna move it to production, tune it, eventually you're gonna deprecate and retire it. And so Detections is gonna handle all of that and it's gonna work hand in hand with playbooks because any detection can be turned into a play. And what does that mean and why is that significant? Well, 
A detection is great, but you may actually want in your organization a playbook that says, if this detection fires, if you have an alert for this, then you need to go and check this machine, you need to go and do this, you need to go and create a ticket for the help desk, or you need to have a re-image process, but you're going to create that entire kind of life cycle of what happens during that incident response process. And all that's going to be documented in that sort of playbook. So again, kind of taking everything that you do up to the next level while all the while keeping you in Security Onion console. So this is just a very brief sneak peek of detections. Uh, this is currently being worked on by Corey, who I don't see him here. Corey, there he is, he's way in the back. So uh, if you see Corey, uh, shake his hand because he's been doing some great work on detections. And so you can see just a couple of screenshots of it there. You can see some Suricata NIDS rules there. And then we'll, we'll zoom in on this in a second. But you can kind of see once you kind of drill into a detection, you can see all of the kind of metadata for that rule, the rule itself. Um, and there you can see the, the Suricata rule there at the bottom. So just a very brief example, but you get the idea of you know, having all of this power at your fingertips, not only with detections themselves, but ultimately how that interfaces with playbooks and how that becomes a, a part of the entire incident response life cycle. So detections and more new features are coming soon. And we'll just leave it at that, leave you wanting more. I'm not gonna tell you more. You'll just have to pay attention to our social media as it comes in the future. So, in conclusion, we hope that Security Onion helps you peel back the layers and make your adversaries cry. So that's it. That's all we have. We hope you've had a good time. We thank you for being here. We hope to see you again uh, tomorrow at B-Sides Augusta, and we hope to see you back here next year. So thank you all very much.